So, we've been diving into the incredible world of WAN 2.1 VASE recently. And if you haven't already noticed, this AI framework is truly a game changer for video editing. Many creators are already using VASE to push the boundaries of what's possible in AI video. In my previous videos, I've explored some advanced techniques like using controls, references, and masking in VASE, where you can perform mind-blowing character swaps within the same video or even completely change the background with ease. Today, I'm super excited to show you how all of this magic can be achieved right within ComfyUI's native node. I am going to get more in-depth of using VASE rather than beginner level, so if you want to learn or know about it, should watch this till the end. Take a look at these examples I've prepared. This isn't just about swapping characters anymore. We're talking about full-on video restyling. You can transform the entire mood of your footage, like turning a regular landscape shot into a completely different scene, or effortlessly swapping one character for another. And it doesn't stop there. Backgrounds are fair game too. For instance, check out this boxing clip where I swap the boxing ring for a volcanic eruption backdrop, complete with dramatic lightning effects. But here's the deal. Vase isn't limited to just character or background swaps. This powerful AI framework also excels at face swaps. If you have a close-up shot, Vase uses facial recognition to track every subtle movement of the mouth and eyes, allowing you to seamlessly replace one face with another while keeping those natural expressions intact. So, we're going to explore how you can achieve all of this and more using ComfyUI's native tools. So, in ComfyUI here, we're going to try a few things. First, we'll go through how we can configure this workflow. I just set it up last weekend, and as you can see, these examples were done using this workflow. Right here, we see the vase. This is the most important part, the heart of this workflow, where we talk about combining different controls, like the concept of control net, which we usually use with animate diff. That's a really flexible option for us to experiment with different settings and combinations for animations. And it's similar to the concept from control net, I haven't seen other references of people doing this, but it just came up from my concept of making this to connect the conditioning together, along with the control videos. This is obviously whatever control types of video input you have. So if you have control net for DW pose, you have the depth anything V2 as the control net preprocessors. The output of image frames will connect to the control videos input. Same as the WAN videos wrapper. We've got three combinations of inputs here. You've got the control mask, and the last one is the reference image. So these three options allow you to play around with various combinations. Also, you have multiple vase as the conditioning for controlling your output video and how that looks. But by connecting multiple vase nodes, of course, you need to understand clearly what you want to do. You have to understand how the different features of vase are going to be used before applying them. Otherwise, you'll mess yourself up. Your mind will blow up and you won't get the video output you want. So here, the first two vase nodes I'm connecting with the control net preprocessors. I've outputted the DW pose and the depth anything V2 preprocessors. Now, of course, you can use other preprocessors here. That's why I like to use the auxiliary control net preprocessors, where I can have a big drop down and choose other types of control net preprocessors. That way, you can be more flexible instead of only choosing one or two types of preprocessors running all the time. Sometimes, you have to try different motion movements combined with different types of control net preprocessors to present the video output in a better way. In the last one, I've used the masking groups here, where we're using a very basic way of segmenting anything. Now, you can use Segment Anything too, which has the edit pointer for doing the segmenting. For example, if you use the point editor from the KJ node and connect this to Segment Anything 2, as you can see right here, we have the Segment Anything 2 with the SAM 2 models. I like to use the SAM 2.1 large because that way, we have more data to play around with. With a large type of model, we can pass the image for segmentation using the pointer. It works, but in a medium-sized workflow like this, I'll put it in a more simplified way for segmentations. Therefore, I'm using segment anything here and using the prompt as the way of segmenting. Now, you can try any other text prompt and test it out yourself. It works as well. Now in here, I don't need this invert mask because we have the growth mask with blur, both mask, and invert mask outputs already available. So if you're masking for the character in this case, then of course, use the mask output. If you want to mask the background, like in the scenario of this two boxer video clip, 
where you want to style transfer or totally restyle the background of this video clip, then this way you will use the invert mask. When you select the segment as the character, then you're going to connect the mask invert to convert the mask to an image and pass this to our next step. But if you're choosing the mask output, then that means you're going to use the character. Then come back to here. We have three vase video nodes. Now pay attention to here because if you have something you don't want to use, for example, you don't want to use the first control net from the DW pose, you can bypass it here, and that way it won't get the data from the DW pose. It will directly pass the conditioning from here to the second vase node. Let's say if you don't even want the mask features this time, you just want to use the control net. That means you're going to bypass the mass vase node that's doing the masking features. But one thing you have to remember is that we have to pass the latent data. For example, in here, we've got the pink dot right here. As you can see, also the pink dot from the last WAN phase 2 videos, we've got the latent data. This way, we have to reconnect the latent data to our sampler. Then that way, we won't run into errors because there's nothing coming out from the last output of the masking vase native node. Also, we have the trim latent. Well, you need to pass it from the last output of the vase 2 videos. If I'm using the mass masking edit vase to videos node here, then we're going to pass the last output from this trim latent to the trim videos latent. Otherwise, if you're not using the mass edit vase to videos node here, then we're going to pass again like the pink connection here. We pass the last output from this group. Then that way, you can do a correct way of bypassing the mask edit if you don't want to use masking in this process. In this case, we're going to only use this second control net, which is the depth anything to run the vase video editing. So, there's a lot of combinations that you have to try and test. There's no one answer to say, this is black and white. What kind of steps do you need to do? It's all about creativity, and you learn how the concept of how the comfy UI connections work, along with the WAN 2.1 vase, and how the concept runs first in the fundamental concept if you like. In this case, we turn on all three conditionings here. That means that from the last output of the latent and the trim latent, we're going to pass these two values back to the K sampler latent image and the trim video latent. Then let's say we're going to enable everything this time and try that out here. I've got a demo video here that we can test. Let's say we have a guy playing basketball dribbling here and we're going to try to mask this guy and use another character to replace him. This is something we saw before, like the Hanyuan videos for video-driven customizations where we can also put a reference image of a guy doing basketball dribbling and replace that character with the reference image character. This is something we're going to do, using these examples here. So we're going to try that out and see how that works. Okay, so we've got the generated result here. As you can see, we've got the dribbling of the player as the demo. I just tried it a short video length here. This proof of concept works with these animations for the futuristic robot dribbling on this basketball court. And this looks okay, not too much detail, but for using the Cosvid LoRa sampling to make a conceptual video output, just to make it a proof of concept that this Wanve setting works for what it should look like in the output. Of course, if you want to have more detail and higher quality, then you gotta do is make this step sampling higher. Also, turn off the cause vid because it just helps you to faster the video generation, but it doesn't help you to make the video quality better. So that's basically the scenario like this one where I turn to another cartoon character holding the bag walking across the street. This is the same concept of using these animations and a similar concept of video using this swapping the character to this lady wearing a pink tank top and white track pants walking in the Greek temple. Also this example as well, using the same settings, but then in this case, in these examples here, we're invert masking. That means once we're using the segment anything to mask the character, we turn the opposite side to mask the background. So you can use different varieties of ways to do that. And that example using for mask background will be using this mask invert, connect that to the mask here, convert mask to image, Pass that to our vase handling the control video and as well as using the mask invert as the output for the control mask here. Next, we're going to try something like this video. We have a landscape shot like this. A lot of cases aren't only focusing on characters, but sometimes we want to do a landscape view. Mountains, cars, streets, whatever kind of video footage. We want to restyle it using our reference image where we have the volcano and then turn that into an apocalyptic style of video footage. 
Then, in this case, we're going to use the depth anything, and we don't need the DW pose here. So, in this way, we're going to turn it back to the opposite side, using the second one base 2 videos in this group. We also don't need to use the mask edit features. That means we don't need to use the last vase 2 videos node here. And also, we can bypass this group as well for masking features. Then, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, since this is bypassed already, we don't have the data for the latent and trim latent. Therefore, we have to reconnect this to the second one vase 2 videos here. We connect the latent and also the trim latent to this red dot here. That's going to make it work without error. Also, I put a fast group bypass here. So in case you don't want to run the sampling first, you want to turn it off and just have a quick preview of what it looks like in the control net video output or the masking video output as well. Just have a quick preview before you turn it on and run the sampling. And this way will be more cost efficient for your GPU processing and computer power consumption. When you're not sure yet, you want to have a quick look at what will be masked in the segmentations or what kind of control net you're using and what it's going to look like. <clears throat> So, let's say we're using the Depth Anything V2 here, and we're going to use another landscape view instead of that island coast view that we have here. And we gotta turn this to another volcano. Again, let's say we're going to use a footage of this one. Have a snow mountain and maybe have some volcano eruptions on this behind here and burn some trees and, you know, some effect like that in this footage. And we put the reference video here, and also we put the reference image of the volcano here as well. Then, let's turn this a little longer video length to 81 and see how that looks like. So, we've got the processing here for the Depth Anything V2, and we've got the Mountain Landscape View processing here. Now, as you can see, I just got an error because I haven't turned on the sampling, and it caused an error in the image concatenate here. We're missing image 5, which the image 5 will be the sampling output. So, therefore, once you see this, don't worry about that, you just have to turn on the enable sampling option and you will have the sampling turned on and do this second run again, and it will start processing in the sampler. Now, once the green mark on the sampler is running, you're ready to generate the video. And yes, of course, we can do that using this video, turn the snow mountain footage of the car driving, and bring this to other styles using the same motions, same shape or forms of the whole video's footage. And we have this volcano eruption going on here and the styles of the tree as well. As you can see, it's changed without the snow and the winter atmosphere. I did this generation, set this strength to 0.8. And again, this is going to change a lot depending on the scenario you're doing and what kind of video effect you want to produce. If you set it high strength here, let's say 0.8, you, of course, will get more influence by the source video where we're getting from the original footage. I've got another video combined here that I generated previously. I was using 0.25 in this generation here, where I had the volcano as the reference image. Also, because of the depth anything V2, I set it to 0.25. This time, we have less influence by the control net preprocessor image. Therefore, the motions were able to have the motions of how the car is coming from here to, you know, moving forward to the road. But it doesn't have those trees and mountains, those objects from the left anything from here where we got most of the trees remaining. If we have the higher strength setting in this part here, then of course it depends on what kind of video generations you want to do. If you're setting the strength high, then of course, that means it will follow more of the original video. How that strength setting depends on your settings over there. And this is how we can do that. The next scenario we're going to do is the mask face swap of the character. And also, maybe we can call this the character swap here. <laughs> also doing a face swap as well. Oh yeah, I know a lot of people looking for face swap. Because, of course, we're going to have exactly another character replacing that. And a close-up shot of this is able to handle pretty well. So, in this way, we're going to use the same video for the demo of the man talking in the coffee shop like this. A lot of motions, a lot of lip and eye movements here. And we're going to use another image, the reference AI generated image, and then we're going to see how that looks like. Now, everything works as I expected here, because we need that character to be worked on. And then here actually, we don't need the depth anything to work on this too much. Instead, maybe we just lower this to a very low strength. We still keep some, you know? Create some distancing between the character and the environment in the video. This way, you know, still keep some distance using this point too. In the second vase notes here, the first one we're going to use for the control net. 
The first group here is the DW pose, which I'll remain at about 50%, or sometimes, like 60%. It depends on what kind of emotions you want to do. If you don't want exactly the same emotions as the reference video does, then I would suggest just having 0.5 here. Have a little bit more freedom for the AI to generate what kind of facial emotions or expressions. The mask edit node in the WAN vase. I'll put that as one, or yeah, keep it default settings here. It doesn't matter. So let's try that out here. This time, I'll turn it a little bit higher for this video because it's a close-up shot of the face. I want to have more details of how the character is going to render. So, let's say I turn it to 15 steps and generate this video. Okay, then after that, we got the generated result here. As you can see, the swap of the character using the DW pose, depth anything V2, and then the masking area. We specified the masking area to change as the generated result here. So it's quite amazing that just after one year of AI video development, we can have pretty nice generated results locally. And based on the WAN 2.1 foundation, we can generate different varieties of videos and video editing within the AI framework. So that's it for this video, and we'll be talking about more in the vase, how we can do that in the later videos, and also cover some other AI models based on WAN 2.1 vase to make those fine-tuned models as well. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.